James Harden. Clearly one of the best players in the NBA, leading the Rockets to the best record in the league at the All-Star break, and is also debatably the leading player to receive this year's MVP honors. He's a proven player in all respects, but what often goes overlooked about a lot of the stars in the NBA is the hard work and struggle many of them went through to get to where they're at now. Well, in this video, I'll be taking a deeper look at James Harden's arrival to the big stage and the steps he took to becoming one of the league's elite. James Harden Jr. was born on August 26, 1989 in Los Angeles, California to Manya Willis and James Harden Sr. His father was in the Navy at the time and he later drifted into drugs and was in and out of jail. James had little interest in his father even when he later showed up at his high school games. To this day, James refuses to use Jr. when writing his name. Manya, meanwhile, had a steady job as an administrator with AT&T in Pasadena. James was Manya's third child. He had two siblings, 10 and 14 years older including a half-brother, Achille Robertson, who was a star quarterback for Locke High School in South LA and later the University of Kansas. James spent most of his childhood in the Rancho Dominguez section of Compton. Like Achille, he was a big, fast, athletic kid who was drawn on the basketball court. James suffered from asthma growing up, which affected his play on the court. James' mother, Manya, says that sports gave him something positive to do that was physically active. Harden's first love is baseball. The Southpaw described himself as a great pitcher and first baseman. Manya said that James wanted to start playing organized basketball around age 10 quickly fell in love with the game after playing for a Parks and Recreation team in nearby Watts. There was a hoop put up on the garage door at his house so he could work on his game in his free time. James stayed busy with school and playing sports year round. He said that he always had something to do. I was playing t-ball at first, my mom always took me to practice after school, I was always on the move. I didn't really have time to sit around and start hanging out with whoever. After t-ball I went to basketball and after starting to play basketball, that's when I fell in love with it. I just kept going. It was a cycle from here on out. I was active all year round, I just tried to stay away from the streets. James' mom says that she didn't really like basketball or sports, period, but knew that her kids had to do something to keep their mind busy. At home, James was a quick-fingered video game player. At school, he was an attentive and serious student. James was a huge UCLA Hoops fan. His favorite player was Jason Capono. Rancho Dominguez was one of the emerging working class sections of the notorious Los Angeles suburb, with less violent crime but more break-ins and property theft. James says that it was pretty dangerous. Like a lot of environments around the world, the more you can try to focus on the positive and stay away from the streets, the better off you'll be. Because of the state of the neighborhood, Manya sent James out of the area for schooling. In 2003, he enrolled at Artesia High School in Lakewood, about 15 minutes away. James once wrote a note to his mom while in high school. Could you wake me up at 7? And could you leave me a couple dollars? From James. P.S. Keep this paper. I'm gonna be a star. He was right, as he is now arguably the NBA's most intimidating scorer. She still has the paper. Artesia had a powerful hoops program with a long and impressive history. James didn't know about it until he arrived on campus and saw pictures of his idol Jason Capono in the gym. The coach of the varsity team was Scott Perra. James cracked the starting lineup as a sophomore in 2004, contributing 13.2 points per game and helping Artesia finish with a 28-5 record. By his junior year, James had grown several inches and now stood well over 6 feet. He had also developed a reliable left-hand jump shot and got his asthma under control. Perra thought James was ready to play at a larger role in the offense, but James didn't want to appear selfish. Perra knew that he could do it. Although James was quiet and respectful around him, he was a boisterous and popular player in the locker room. Eventually, James' mother told him to do whatever his coach said, or he'd have to deal with her. James stepped up in 2005 and led the Pioneers to the state championship. He averaged nearly 20 points a game as Artesia finished with a 33-1 record. That summer, James continued to develop as the star of an AAU team named Pump and Run, regularly pouring in 20-plus points a game and playing great defense. At the Super 64 tournament in Las Vegas in late July, he turned heads when netting 67 points in two games on the same day, all while facing future college stars Kevin Love, Nolan Smith, Austin Freeman, and Michael Beasley. Artesia repeated as state champs in 2006 under new coach Lauren Grover. James was good for 15 to 20 points a game again and helped sophomore Renardo Sidney and junior Malik Story become stars. Recruiters were quick to note that James possessed a basketball IQ comparable to many NBA players. When it came time for James to commit to a university to play for, the decision was a no-brainer. James' old high school coach Scott Perra was now an assistant at Arizona State, and Manya was moving to nearby Phoenix to take care of a home that her mother had left her in her will. Herb Sendik's Sun Devils were considered no better than a 500 team heading into 2007. They were also viewed as one of the weakest teams in the Pac-10. James took command of the team from the shooting guard position. He led a young squad to a 99 conference record and an overall record of 21 and 13. He was tops in the club with 17.8 points and 2.1 steals per game. He also led Arizona State with a 40.7% mark from the three-point range. The 73 seals were three short of the school record. The Sun Devils narrowly missed an NCAA tournament bid and played in the NIT instead. They won twice before the Florida Gators took them up. James, meanwhile, was named first team All-Pac-10 and was a member of the conference All-Freshman team as well. Despite these accolades, he was growing tired of hearing how young he looked. James decided to start growing a beard to look more mature. It started as a goatee and hasn't stopped to this day. That beard would come to define him. 
almost as much as his maturing game. And you start with James Harden, and Harden, the league's top scorer, and he's a young man that can drive it to the goal and make perimeter shots. And Barry, he scores a lot of points, but doesn't shoot the ball very much. In James' sophomore season, he averaged 20.1 points per game, led the conference in steals for the second season in a row, and was voted Pac-10 Player of the Year. He was the third player in school history to be named the conference's top performer. The Sun Devils went 20-10, finished fourth in the conference, and earned a bid to the 2009 NCAA tourney, but were knocked out in the second round. Shortly after, he declared himself eligible for the NBA draft. Blake Griffin was the draft's big prize, and the Los Angeles Clippers grabbed him with the first pick. James went two selections later to the Oklahoma City Thunder. He had worked out for the team prior to the draft day and later sent a note to GM Sam Presti listing the reasons that he wanted to play for the Thunder. That sealed the deal. Oklahoma City decided to make him the number three pick. Now, James Harden would spend three seasons playing for the Oklahoma City Thunder where he was named the NBA Sixth Man of the Year in 2011-2012 season. Harden also helped the Thunder reach the 2012 NBA Finals where they lost in five games to LeBron James Miami Heat. After failing to agree on a contract extension with the Thunder, Harden was traded to the Houston Rockets on October 27, 2012, and it's at Houston where he was given the opportunity to be the focal point of a team and become the perennial all-star and MVP candidate that we know him as today. In his first season playing alongside Chris Paul, the two of them are excelling in their roles and the Rockets have searched the best record at the All-Star break, and James Harden has certainly cemented himself deep in the MVP conversation. Regardless of the outcomes of this season, James Harden's career to this point has been a huge success, and I hope this video shines some light on his path to that success. As always, thanks for watching guys, and as of now, I'm a brand spanking new channel, but check out my other Before the Fame videos, and if you like that kind of content, subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any other plays you'd like me to do Before the Fame video on next, let me know in the comment section below. Peace!